Um, it's a, the continuation of the zero day suits meme from last year, which sort of turned into zero day lab coats um, because a lot of hackerspaces, can we get a round of applause for the sweet lab coats that some of these hackerspaces have made? Yeah. No, and actually I got this one from uh, Roundsite Round Labor because they, uh, they, they ordered a laser cutter. Um, and you know, everything is more expensive in Europe. So they thought, hey, Nick, when you're coming over to Europe, could you buy this awesome laser cutter from a place in Nevada, put it on the plane with you, and, and bring it here to Germany so that we could you know, avoid some of the costs associated with it. And so I, I looked online. It's a box maybe about this big, you know, and then the laser tube with it. I thought, yeah, sure, I can put it in a big suitcase. Would, would be no thing. The day that I'm leaving, because the people at my hackerspace were asleep all four times UPS tried to deliver the laser. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that should get a little bit more laughter than that. Um, I, I go to the UPS office, the, the shipping company, and I say, you know, hi, I'm here to pick up this package. They go around looking all the boxes and things like that. And they, they say, oh, we can't find it. I say, well, you know, I'm trying to catch a plane. And then I look over at this gigantic box. It's like this big, this high, and I'm thinking, no. <laughs> no, that can't be it. And then, and then the lady no, looks, sees me looking at it, and she's like, oh, maybe that's it. Goes over to it and looks at it. Oh, yeah, it is your package. <laughs> and how much more, do I have to kill more time? Right, right now. Um, uh, how, how many OK. All right, we will continue this later, um, just because we're all. <laughs> We, we've got another talk. Everybody, give Karsten a huge. Well, Karsten, are you ready to go? Um, give it one. <laughs> give it like one more minute. Hang on a second. All, all, all the, all the pressure. Yes, Nick, tell us a story. <laughs> it's Nick. It's Nick. It's Jack and Ori with Nicholas Farr. <laughs> now, <laughs> they don't want stories. They want content. Who wants a story? Okay, all right. I, I will. I will. Okay. I, I will attempt. So, so I'm noticing this package. And like, oh, bring your car around. So I bring my car around. It doesn't fit in the trunk. It fits in the back seat if both of the front seats are are moved up quite a bit. And this is an American car. So it's, it, you know, you could fit three European cars inside it. Um, and then, you know, then I, I drive to my hackerspace, I pick up my friend who's going to drop me off at the airport. He's, he's a pretty big guy, so he's almost up against the dash like this going, dude, why do you always get into these situations? And I said, Nick, well, we are ready. To be continued, I promise. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Nick, for part one. Okay, I'll try to get to the part where I'm at the airport. Is that okay? Okay. So just to catch everybody up, Ramsite Labor gave me a lab coat. I brought them a laser printer from the United States. Went to UPS, the box is really big. So now we're in my car. And there's this gigantic box of laser cutter in the back of my car that I'm gonna try to get on a plane. So we roll up into the air, we, we get up into the airport, get out of the car, I get my bags out of the trunk, and then there's this gigantic box in the back seat. Now, at, at airports in the United States, there are these porters. They have carts, and, and they're there to help old people or people with large packages, and we pull up right in front of one. And I get out of my car, and I look at the porter. The porter looks at the box in my car. I look at the box in my car. I look back at the porter, and he knows that he's gonna get some tips today because of this gigantic box that's in my car. And so he says right away, you know, let, let me help you with that, let me help you with that. Now, I had just gotten back from Japan and I was on my way to Europe. And I just realized at that moment, I didn't actually have any US dollars in my wallet. <laughs> and I was feeling a little bit guilty about this. And so, you know, he's, he's loading it up onto his cart and we're, we're rolling up uh, to the KLM service when I'm thinking, how am I gonna, how am I ever gonna compensate this guy? Roll up, roll up to the service counter. The lady sees my gigantic box. She looks at me and she just says, no. <laughs> not how can I help you, sir? Not what's your flight? No. She just says, no. 
this is not going to happen. And I said, no, no, I really have to get this. And she's like, fine, put it on the scale. Put it on the scale, weighs in at 42 kilos. 12 kilos more than you're allowed to fly with with any one package. Um, also, somebody's watching my, are you watching my time here, Dan? Okay, cool. Okay, all right, cool. And so, I have other bags, and, and I figure if I can just get 12 kilos out of this laser cutter and into another bag, I'm golden. Everything is going to be fine, right? And so, I've got the guy next to me, and he's looking at me. He, he knows. He's like, I've got, I've got scissors. I've got tape, man. Like, he's, he's into it. He wants to do this. Pull, pull it off the scale. And here we are in, in Dulles International Airport, a very nice airport, tearing apart a cardboard box with a gigantic laser cutter in this. And I have a beard, and I'm in the United States. <laughs> What? No, I'm not going to shave the beard. Although, quick, quick little side story. Um, you know that I, I come here a lot. I love European hacker events. I love helping out hacker spaces, doing all these sorts of other things. And so I fly Delta, just out, out of loyalty. Delta, KLM, Air France. Air France stewardesses. Anyway. Um, so I've gone through Amsterdam at least a dozen times since Har, but never with a beard. Go through Amsterdam this one time. The guy takes my passport, and he, he looks at me, and I look back at him, and he looks at me, because I don't have a beard on the picture of my passport, and he says, did you get a parking ticket in Utrecht in 2007? <laughs> and I thought, uh, no, but I rented a car that a lot of people drove right around there in 2007, and he's like, come with me. And, and so it turns out there was this camera ticket, some, a car I'd rented at Har, something like that happened. And we go through, I pay the ticket, go through all the paperwork, and I say, I've gone through Amsterdam 12 times since 2007. How come this has never come up before? And he's like, we don't always check. <laughs> true, true story. So, so back to the airport, we're tearing apart this laser cutter, and I, I open up the box, get all of the packing material out of it, and it's just one solid unit. And I'm like, oh, no. And so I'm, you know, I get a screwdriver out. I'm ready to start ripping stepper motors out of this thing, trying to get 12 kilos out of this. Um, oh, finally get the key, open up the box. Oh, there's parts inside. It is actually already taken apart. So we're pulling out the parts. I'm throwing them in my other bags with a beard in Dulles Airport in the United States. It was funnier the first time, wasn't it? And, and finally get everything out, and then we take it back to the scale. It's still slightly over, but we think maybe, 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 just maybe they might let us get away with it. Um, also, when, if you happen to leave, take some bottles with you. <laughs> so we're, so we, get, we get it back. We finally distribute all of these parts around all of my other bags and say, we're just going to go for it. We don't have that much time. We tape up the box, and we're, we're taping it up, and then we take it back to the counter. Fortunately, this time, there was a much nicer lady who just, you know, was sitting there behind the counter going, that's a big box you have there, sir. Where are you flying to today? And I'm like, okay, good. I've got this. I've got this one. Okay, we're going to do it. Put the box back on the scale. Weighs in at 32 kilos. And she looks at me. She's like, you know the maximum weight um, in the class that you're flying is, is 30 kilos. No, it's 30 kilos, because Americans are heavier. We, we just always have more stuff with us. <laughs> like, it's, it's just a, yeah, just a fact. You know, bigger, huh? Fat tax. fat tax. No, being fat is cheaper in the United States. Oh, yeah, That's why all of us are so fat. Okay, so, so we're there, and she's like, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to check this. You have to take it over to KLM Cargo. And I'm going to get this thing to Germany. I'm like, I am going to fly with this laser cutter to Germany and deliver it to Ramsite Labor. <clears throat> and I, I know I'm calling my friend. I'm like, dude, pull the car around. Come back. Come back to the airport. We got to take this thing to cargo. I'll give you some money. Just we'll do it. And, and the lady's like, I'm afraid you're not going to be able to make the cutoff window for cargo. And I'm not even listening to her. I'm like, I'm going to do this. This is going to happen. What? Two seats? I've, I've already bored you that much. Okay. Okay, no. Okay, no. There are two seats right up front here if anybody wants them. Very front row. <laughs> that that was fast. So so to 
to conclude this story, we're on the scale. She says, okay, you're not going to make cargo. Let me just call a supervisor, which is never good news. <laughs> At an airport, when you have a beard, <laughs> flying internationally in the United States. So she calls over the supervisor. The supervisor looks at the scale, and she's like, yes, I'm sorry, you're going to have to take this over to cargo. And I'm like, no, please, please, just, 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 please. And I, I, I look, a man who's about to cry wearing a beard, that's really pathetic. <laughs> and, so, and so I say, please, just, just, just make this happen. She looks at me. She looks at the box. She looks at me. She switches off the scale. Switches it back on, looks the other way, and says, oh, 30 kilos. Have a nice day. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nick. I arrive in Vienna yeah, with the laser cutter. Me. This gigantic box. Okay. How many of you know the, the first half of this story? Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> So the first thing out of the belt is this gigantic box that's been taped together in a haphazard way. And of course, I'm, I'm now granted, I'm in a suit, I'm not in a lab coat. I'm still bearded, but in Vienna, this is apparently okay. Nobody, nobody even batted an eyelash when I sort of tumble this gigantic box onto a luggage cart, then wait for my regular suitcase, then wait for my um, suit bag, and then of course my laptop case. And I'm thinking, there's no way I'm going to get through the nothing to declare line. <laughs> so, of course, the first thing I do is, is I, I walk into the something to declare line. And the guy looks at me, and I look at him, and he's like, well, what do you have to declare? And I said, well, it's a laser cutter. And he says, well, what's that? <laughs> and then I said, well, it, it, it makes things. He says, well, what kinds of things does it make? I said, things. <laughs> and he's like, what are you, an artist? And that's when I said, yes. <laughs> because, and you guys are going to tell me what, like, when something happens up here so I can get off the stage, right? Okay. <laughs> Okay. We will, we will. Okay, uh, thank, thank Nick, you, Kate. Yes. I'm the herald of the evening. I tell you when to get from the stage. <laughs> well, you'll at least tell it to me in English, right? Uh, I do, yeah, yes, okay, I, do, right, I, do, cool. I do. Okay, good. <laughs> and so he says, all right, fine, you're, you're fine, whatever. Just go to the nothing to declare line. So I'm like, okay, back my little card out. Go to the nothing to declare line. Instantly, somebody jumps on me. He's like, what's that? And then we go through this whole thing again, only he looks at my passport once. And then finally I said, well, I'm an artist. He's like, oh, okay, fine, you're an artist, let him go. <laughs> so I walk out and I'm kind of halfway expecting, um, you know, at least one of friends of mine that I've had for five or six years to meet me at the airport. And yeah, no, that doesn't happen. But somebody from OKCupid, who I had started emailing three days before, she met me at the airport. Yeah, it, it, that, that's a much longer story that we're not going to get into. Uh, <laughs> what? Oh, oh, just don't psych me out like that. So anyway, I... I haul this gigantic thing into a minivan, take a taxi cab, go to the museum's courtier, because actually, for the past month, I actually was an artist in residence um, for Monochrome at the museum's courtier in Vienna, which was supposed to just be me partying for a month in Vienna, but turned into a whole other gigantic art project. Um, but that's another long story that I'm not going to get into. So I have this gigantic laser cutter, and I have to get it to Realmsite Labor. And I'm thinking... I can take a train, you know, it's, it's not going to be a big, huge problem. I'll just get a little dolly for it and we'll be fine. Everything will be cool. So I go to the store to buy a regular luggage dolly, like the metal frame things that we have uh, in the States. And all they have is something that's about this high that has a platform that's maybe a, a little bit wider than that 
for a 40 kilo box that is this big that I'm supposed to be lugging on ICE trains. You, you, you kind of know where the story is going from here, right? Okay, no? Okay, so I, get, I have an itinerary, you know, so I'm supposed to, I get on the train in Vienna, I'm supposed to switch in Munich. Oh God, now I forgot the itinerary, but it, it didn't end up being what I was on. So I get on the train in Vienna and thinking, okay, everything's gonna be fine, the train's on time, fall asleep. This is the first sleep that I've gotten in, in a little bit of time. Wake up in Frankfurt. <laughs> which is pretty far away from Munich. I didn't even think that was possible. And then, and then so I'm calling people like, yeah, I, I totally missed that train. How am I, gonna get, how am I going to get back to, to Mannheim? Wait at, wait at Frankfurt, pull this gigantic box off of the train with all of my, you know, with, with a couple of other things that I had for them. So I'm waiting there on the platform, find another train, get on yet another train, put the box in, go to my seat, fall asleep again, <laughs> and miss my connection yet again. Only this time when I get up, the train's kind of, the train's rather full, and I try to get seat reservations, and I've noticed that as I'm getting off the train this time, three kids, roughly like 16, 17, 18, decided to use it as a bench, because it was that big. And I'm like, I'm, I'm looking at them, and they're looking at me, and they're like, what, what do you want, suited dude? And I'm like, would you, would you get off my box? And they look at me, it's like, how is this crappy thing yours? <laughs> I mean, now granted, they didn't actually say this in English, they just looked at me when I said, you know. And then they looked at me going. And I was like. <laughs> and they were like, and they were like, yes, get, get, get off my box. <laughs> take the box off the train yet again. And of course, the, guy, the guys from Rounds Light Labor are like, we're on the platform. You're coming in on platform four. You're coming in on platform four. I'm like, uh, which actually, are we fixed yet? <laughs> we're, uh, are we still having problems? We still have problems, yeah. Uh, we, we have the problem that the Fnord news show would not work without having video on the beamer, and that's the problem, and the guys up there are trying to fix it. You're, you're not just making this stuff up, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I'm not. I would not miss a Fnord news show for that. Okay, all right. <laughs> and, and I'm think most of the people... Oh. Long so, story short, they were on the platform, we loaded it up into their car, shockingly it fit, got to the hackerspace, opened it up, they made it, it's called the Phaser, it's at Ramsite Labor, and it works, bitches! Nick Farr!